This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, in this video, I'll be demonstrating how to manage soft cortical cataract, which can be challenging to many of the newer surgeons. The multiple variations of techniques of, to deal with the soft cataracts, we use carousel technique, we can use the the mechanical chop technique and we can also resort to the uh, stop and chop technique and in this case I'll be demonstrating my variation of the stop and chop technique when I call it as the double Y groove technique. So let's start with the excess is already done. Now currently the red glow is very good. The moment I do hydro dissection the entire lens becomes cloudy and visualization is becomes a challenge. So we begin by removing the superficial epinucleus in the cortex and now is the time to start creating a group. For soft cortical cataracts, the stop and chop is a reliable technique. The only modification which I do is to have a slightly broader width at the both the peripheries. So let's begin. So I'm using a very low power of 40% torsional to do the sculpting. The sculpting is started from the sub-incisional area and then goes under the excess margin to the opposite pole. And after the first couple of strokes, I just widen the peripheral part of the groove, the distal part of the groove, so that it is much more wider compared to the central thinner groove. And then the central part is deepened. So many novice surgeons ask me that tell me that they're very scared to go to the peripheral part. Their fears are justified because they're worried that the fecoti inadvertently punch a hole to the posterior capsule. Well, that is possible. That fear is legitimate. The only issue is that can happen when we have slightly higher flow rate in vacuum. That can uh, cause slightly risky situations. So the strategy here is to use a very low flow rate about maybe anywhere between 10 to 14. The vacuum is between 80 to 100. And with this low vacuum, low flow rate and of course low power, the cutting is very controlled and you can literally see how much you want to shave off the nucleus without having any risk of inadvertently catching the equator capsule bag. So if you have the right parameters, you don't have to be so fearful of uh, creating a hole in the peripheral part of the capsule bag. Then the nucleus is rotated. The same procedure is continued. The principle of this technique I have explained in a couple of videos which will be listed here. The idea is we don't want the peripheral part of the heminucleus to abut against each other because that is the principal reason why the nuclear fragments cannot be maneuvered out of the bag. So we are taking care of those obstacles by making the distal part of the groove wider. We have a wider distal end and a narrower central end. So now, time to separate the uh, nucleus. The, using the two instruments, the nucleus is divided into two heminucleus. And what we can clearly see is that the distal edges of both the heminucleus are not touching against each other. There's enough space in between them so that when you try to maneuver the nucleus out, there is less of an obstruction from the opposite heminucleus. That's the whole idea. Now, do I want to divide this heminucleus into smaller fragments? No, that would not be ideal because we get a better purchase when we have an entire soft heminucleus and eating this big chunk is not going to be a problem because it's very soft. Uh, where do we hold the heminucleus? Rather than going and holding at the edge or exactly in the center, we need to hold somewhere in between near the mid peripheral area or just beyond the center where we have got enough meat to get a good hold. Small short burst of phaco engage a heminucleus, pull it out of the bag and then emulsify in a jiffy. Then the epinucleus is removed in a similar fashion. The nucleus is rotated. Again, the heminucleus is held in the appropriate position and then pulled out of the bag and then emulsified, followed by removal of the epinucleus. The cortex is then aspirated, the, the intraocular lens is placed into the bag. So just let me revisit this principle of a double Y groove technique, which is very helpful in such soft cortical cataracts. We create a central groove as usual. The only difference is both the ends of this groove are slightly wider than what we conventionally do. This helps us to prevent any obstruction from the opposite heminuclei. 
which is very common in that region and the second thing would be to hold the a nucleus with very less power uh, in the paracentral area or in the mid peripheral region engage and then pull out of the bag and then emulsify so three points create a double y in the groove next would be to avoid dividing into multiple fragments just two big heavy nuclei are good enough number 3 where do we hold them we need to hold them in the paracentral part of the heavy nuclei or rather uh, just before the peripheral part Uh, so that we can negotiate this hemi nucleus out of the bag in a relatively easy manner so that was it thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful